did you guys know I had I had to learn this. I had to learn this. I did not know that trust has to be established first before you can love someone. I'm Dr. Amy, your guide for transforming your trauma into your gift. So what about the six to 12 months of life? And this is where I want to show you something, which is really the the whole focus of that first year of life. It looks different at the zero to six months than the six to 12 months, just because the, the relationship is changing. A baby can, can reach out more when they're six to 12 months of life than the zero to six. But still, in the whole first year of life, we are really looking at building trust. Did you guys know? I had I had to learn this. I had to learn this. I did not know that trust has to be established first before you can love someone. That's what I did wrong with my son. So he arrived with me at age four, and I thought that if I loved him, he would love me back. And I had to learn the hard way that actually love develops out of trust. We have to start with trust. So here's how it works. In the first year of life, this is really the whole first year of life, a a baby has a need. And with that need, it becomes dysregulated. It will start to squirm at first. That's what the dysregulation looks like. And if we ignore it, then it becomes this loud cry eventually. The need is manifested through the dysregulation. And guess what we get to do? Or what the caregiver, what mom gets to do? We get to come in and we get to regulate them. We get to provide, meet that need. And by meeting that need, part of that is regulation of their system, regulation of our system. And when someone comes along and regulates your system for you, how do you feel? Like you can just settle into them. It feels comfortable. That's where the trust starts to develop and with enough trust with enough time and that trust we start to feel love for them and even we can recognize that now in our life as adults those people that regulate our system we start to to trust that you can just rest So this regulation piece is crucial for the whole first year of life. And it's the process of co-regulation that builds that trust. So that in the first year, it's also called the call response cycle, trust cycle. This need and dysregulation, the dysregulation again, if, if we leave the dysregulation unmet, it turns into rage. And then we use all these things to co-regulate, eye contact, touch, milk, feeding, movement, smiles, the the cooing. We do all of this, which is again, notice it's the attunement, touch and neurodevelopment and movement that co-regulates their system. And every time we co-regulate their system or every time that our system was co-regulated, guess what that develops? Trust. So isn't it interesting that when we go back to this very simple assessment that I had you do with the rope, What you did with the rope, whether you let it go or whether you pulled it in tighter, both are an example of you not trusting the relationship. Both are an example of an insecure attachment. I don't trust this relationship. I don't trust this relationship to not overwhelm me. I don't trust this relationship to be enough for me. And depending on your particular unique biology, neurodevelopment, it would have molded which survival style you had. I want to show you a picture because now that we've got this in place, oh, the six to 12 months of life, that is where we start to feel um, overwhelmed by sensory. And so that's when the midbrain is developing. We should be moving into hands and knees crawling, which is why it is not good for those who skip hands and knees crawling and jump to walking. We need that time on our hands and knees to organize our whole sensory system. 
so that touch is regulating for you, so that groups of people are regulating for you, so that sounds and light are not overwhelming to your system. And so for this, for this stage, the six to 12 months of life, this is now moving into other types of uh, specific belief systems about ourselves. And as we move more and more into autonomy, there's other belief systems. So in the six to 12 months of life, your survival style, if you're feeling overwhelmed by sensory things, this is also where if you have a pyroluria, this is likely coming on and contributing to your sensory overwhelm. But if you're overwhelmed with sensory stuff, you're going to need more co-regulation because you're going to be more dysregulated. And you, your system may need more co-regulation than what is possible. No fault of yours, no fault of your parents. It's just you were more dysregulated because of your biology. But what happens is that then if you experienced dysregulation at six to 12 months of life, you, even as an adult, you still feel really small in a big world. You feel still really small in a big world. You can feel powerless. And so many times the survival patterns that develop out of feeling that way is that I need to be strong and in control and success becomes essential. It becomes your purpose in life so that you're not small, you're not powerless, you're not being used. And all of this is still coming out of this inability to trust other people that they have your best interest in mind, that they will meet your needs. They may have started to use you emotionally to meet their own emotional needs as a parent. And yet when we look at what would happen afterwards, when you're walking and crawling and now you're developing this autonomy, this would be your terrible twos, if you want to call it that. And for that autonomy, we have a different cycle because now as you are kind of expanding into who you are and expressing yourself and wanting to go explore, not only is that possible, but are you still provided with safety? Meaning, are you given boundaries and limits? Like, no, you can't put your finger in the electrical socket. And yet looking back at your first year of life, if you did not develop the trust that they had your best interest in mind, when they come to tell you that you can't put your finger in the electrical socket, what's going to be your response? Oh, yes, I am. I can't trust you that you're telling me no because you love me. I think that you're telling me no because you just don't want me to have fun. You don't want me to explore. You don't want me to be my own person. And so this, what happens though at this age is that if for whatever reason, dysregulation is happening when we are walking and exploring, we still need that co-regulation. And if we're not able to have co-regulation and exploration at the same time, guess which one we sacrifice? we will preserve the relationship at the expense of ourselves. Of course we will. That's how we stay alive. And so we shut down our own exploring, our own autonomy in order to preserve the relationship to have some degree of co-regulation. And so at this age, dysregulation at this age would turn into people pleasing. and being the good girl, the good boy, compliant, very uncomfortable with conflict. We'll do anything to avoid conflict. We'll say yes when I really want to say no. The resentment can build up inside and yet these people tend to feel very guilty about that resentment because they feel that they shouldn't feel resentment. They shouldn't feel angry. So they often completely shut that off and may not even be able to access that they feel anger at all. 